What's going on guys? We're gonna have a very interesting conversation talking about the monster that corporate America created and is literally killing corporate America. What I want you to do is watch this video from the beginning to the end because in the end, there's some good stuff for you. I want you to think about before the pandemic because when we entered into 2020, we had a lot of things happen. We had a lot of things go off and this created a huge, huge wave of remote workers. And these people during 2020, 2021, and to some regards, 2022, these people were able to work at home. Let me tell you the story of someone that I know that became a remote worker, female. What she does is she gets up at seven to let her dogs out. She works from seven to 12. 12 o'clock, she takes a nap, wakes up at one, works from one to three, then she goes to the gym. Then she's pretty much done for the day, then she comes home and she piles around. And one of the things that has happened is people have been able to create their own schedule. They come home, they do work, but once again, this may be the business owner in me, but I seriously doubt that most of these people who are working remote are working eight, 10, 12 hour days. I seriously doubt it because there's such a pushback. And this is one of the reasons that CEOs and corporate executives are trying to get people back in the office because they know they don't have a, they don't assume they personally know that these people are not working the way that they would if they were in the office and there's incredible pushback incredible pushback there's a lot of remote workers who literally when they're told hey you must come back to the office they will quit and they will go somewhere else and they will take less money because here's the thing and this is something that i understand very well since i have had the ability to work from home create my own schedule fashion my own work thing and since 2009 once you get to the point where you can create your own schedule do your own thing that's really really hard to take from a person because you seem to feel that you've become empowered now, the difference between me and these remote workers is I have my own company. I've had my own company since 2009. So it's a different ball game for me as an executive entrepreneur who has my own company. But this is one of the things that held, and I actually talked about it. I felt a lot of bad things happened during the pandemic, aside from the disease itself. This whole notion of you had some employees who were making more money getting unemployment because of the additional $600 per week enhancement than they ever made working a full time job. You cannot take a person and say, hey, we're going to give you way more money than you were making when you were working while you're sitting at home playing video games, smoking weed and having random sexual acts with your girlfriend or boyfriend. You're literally getting paid more money to sit at home and do nothing than when you were fully and gainfully employed. When I was in the military, there was a limit to how much leave they would let you take because you would lose your military bearing. Typically, it was less than three months. Some of these people were on the government dole going on two almost two, three years. And now you have these people who were on this government dole and they're like, I don't wanna go back to work. I don't wanna do that. I don't feel like doing that. And then you have all of these people who were working remotely and the corporations are saying, come back to the office, come back to the office, come back to the office. It, it's a battle. It is a battle. It is a big, huge battle that is going on at the moment that a lot of people just do not want to let go. There's a number of YouTube channels who talk about work and the working from working corporately, working remote. Now, here's the thing. I have a schedule. I get up, I go to the gym, then I eat breakfast, then I come home and I start working. And typically I'll start working from 1030. I'll work 1030, 1130, 1230, 1230, 1230, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 
who actually get their jobs done, get their tasks done, and they're working eight, 10, 12 hours a day. There's a group of people who are doing what they need to do. They're handling their business. They're turning in their deliverables. Now there's another group of people, which I think is the largest sector of this, who are just simply have become accustomed to getting paid for 40 hours and they may work two to six hours or they may really work two to four hours and then they've designed these this lifestyle of doing what they want being able to take care of their pets and once again i am not against parents with small children but a lot of these people are working and taking care of their kids and you could not do that in the office but for some reason there are people who think they can do this at home and this is one of the reasons that corporate America is demanding, pounding their fist on the table. You need to come back to the office. And they're working out routines where you come to the office three days a week. And this is creating a huge, huge problem for corporate America. Commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is going through a big, big battle right now. You have all of these companies who have these large tracks of commercial real estate these large office buildings and nobody was coming to work i want you to think commercial leases are usually very expensive give you an example years and years ago this was before this was like 2002 i was renting a store space and it was 2500 bucks a month for 1500 square feet and then i had another um store space that was four thousand dollars a month and it was two thousand square feet this was like 2002. so anytime you get into renting commercial space it is going to be pricey so now once again i'm not saying cry tears for these big corporations because they knew what they were getting into you got this corporation that now has a workforce that isn't working as hard as it would that's a problem then you have this large rented office building that no one is showing up to. That's a problem. So corporate America has some very interesting problems at the moment. And this is one of the reasons that I understand and acknowledge that the invention of artificial intelligence, the ability to do more with less. In the next two years, you're gonna see massive changes with that because the average person has rebelled. And I'm gonna give you some insight and some wisdom on why the average person has rebelled. During the pandemic, this were work remote, work from home, this enhanced uh, stimulus package, these direct payments. For some people, it wasn't enough. It wasn't even close to enough. And for some people, these were extreme perks and bonuses. And for that group of people that this was an extreme perk and bonus, oh my God, this group of people has become untenable. They will not go back to the office. You can beat them, you can shower them, you can burn them. They're not going, I mean, literally, I read this article of this woman who was making $100,000 a year, and they wanted her to come back to the office, and this was the corp this was the compromise. We want you to come to the office three days a week, you can work home from two. And she was used to working from home five days a week. She quit and took a job making $50,000 a year that allowed her to work from home. This is where we are with the work, work from home, the remote, citizens the people because once again going back to the insights so i personally since i've been doing this since 2009 which we're going on 14 years and in this year we'll start our 15th year of me working from home and having 100 percent control of my schedule 100 percent control of my time 100 percent control of what i do that's intoxicating that is hugely intoxicating that is highly liberating once you give someone that type of control because it's about controlling your life controlling your time that is something that the average person is just not going to want to give up and one of the things that they're going to do is they're going to continue to be working and pushing this narrative of working remote now here's a big big thing most people cannot work remote you drive a truck you can't work remote you're a police officer you can't work remote you're a firefighter you can't work remote you're a nurse in the hospital you can't work remote there's a lot of jobs where the people 
cannot even begin to fathom or understand what working remote is. Now, there is a sector, programmers, web designers, designers, there is a certain sector of people who can work from home. And once again, it, it goes back to the person. If the person is hardworking and conscientious, they'll probably work more than eight hours. They'll probably be working all the time. But here's the thing, these corporate managers, these guys who run these, they know for a fact that these people are not working as hard as they could. And this is a huge, 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 huge problem. And one of the things that is happening as we go through this, because once again, I do feel that the pandemic gave the common everyday person in mass power. Yet a lot of these people who begin working remotely and they were like, I don't want to work in the office. I don't ever want to do that again. If I ain't working remote, I'm not going to work. And there is a group of people that this is a hardcore attitude. You, you can't make them go back. They're just not. And one of the things that is going to happen is corporate America is going to have to adopt some new ideals and some ideologies because you cannot get these people back in the office. They will quit. They will go to less pay to get what they want because of having that flexibility, having that freedom is so intoxicating. It's so powerful. It's so liberating to know that you can get up. You don't even have to get dressed. You can just get up, throw on a hoodie, sit at your computer, do your work, show up at a few meetings. That's really powerfully intoxicating. For the corporate corporations, this is a problem from a fiscal standpoint because they're paying out these salaries. Now, here's something else. These people who are working from home, who are not working a full schedule. If you start messing with their pay, this is how you get people. Uh, the other day here in Atlanta, we had a guy who was attending a medical facility with his mother and something popped off and he ended up shooting five people. This is one of the things that's gonna happen if you start messing with these people's money. Even though they're knowingly are not working a full schedule, that's not the case. You mess with my check, I am coming to the office with a gun. You will see me in the office. I will show up for that. It's a very tricky and precarious situation for these companies to manage these workforces because, you know, there, there's a group of people I honestly feel that can work remote and do a really good job and do the things that they needed to do. There's a group of people, there's a group of conscientious, hardworking people who can do that. Let me ex give you an example of uh, some of the employees I had. And an employee, her name was L. We're gonna call her L. Because one of the things is they knew that I did not come into the office because I had a home office and I did most of my work at home. And one day I pop into the office and I'm like, where's L? And one of the other employees like, she didn't come in. So at this point, I call L and I was like, hey, what's going on with the project? What's going on? And, uh, you know, are you at the office? And L said, oh, yeah, I'm at the office. I'm at the office. And at that point, I said, OK, OK, well, I'll talk to you later. And I was like, she just straight up lied to me to my face. And uh, at that point, I put her on a performance schedule, which is you do not get paid unless you turn in work. And that went on for about six weeks and then she just quit. Because one of the things that I found out is that a lot of people, unless they're properly managed and they know that there's a manager there, they're just going to do whatever they want to do. They're just going to do whatever they want to do. And this was another issue. And also that brings up, I had an, another employee here work for me for six weeks and he was, he needed some time off and he thought he was going to get vacation pay. He worked for me for six weeks. Let me tell you what used to happen to us dinosaurs back in the day. We would take a job and we wouldn't get paid for three weeks, have two weeks in the hole. We would have a job. We would not be able to take vacation for a year, a year. We wouldn't be, able to, and this was normal and customary and this was everywhere. Now we have people who feel that they can go ahead and get a job and not even work a full two months and that they can get vacation pay. I'm not talking about a day. I'm talking about a week or two. Once again, I, I go ahead and just illustrate the problems that I had as an employer long, long, long before the pandemic. And I can only imagine, once again, I am a business owner, so I am looking at what these corporations are going through. I'm not looking at it from the average person standpoint because I'm not an average person. And I can just imagine the carnage, the craziness, 
the madness that is going on with these people managing this wanton wild workforce that wants to do exactly what it wants to do but they want to do it on your dime they don't want to do it on their money because they don't have any money but they want to do it on your your dime and this is one of the things that i find to be extremely crazy because here's the thing when you work a job and you're out here doing your thing there are so many things that factor do you know that in your 20s if you get like laid off for a year or two that wrecks your finances for the next 10 years and you know a lot of people i honestly feel are putting themselves in precarious situations because of this deep passion of working from home and once again i, I have some advice for you you want to work from home start your own business at that point no one can take your working away from home you setting up doing the things you want to do start your own business but i feel and this is one of the reasons I will probably never, ever have another job unless it's extremely cushy in my life. Um, well, I don't even, you know, I don't even I don't even have a resume. I have no clue to what potential job I could get. And honestly, as I sit here and think about it, I could create a resume that could probably get me a three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar year job if I actually sat down and focused on that probably do it in three or four months, maybe six months. However, I love what I do. I love being a creative. I love YouTube. I love all of this stuff. So it would be extremely hard to get me into a job unless they were like, okay, we got a job for you. You can work from home and we're only going to require like 20 hours of your time per week. That would be the thing I would have that because there, there's so many things I want to do. And like I said, I understand the desire the need to work from home. I understand the whole situation of wanting to have control of your situation. I understand that. I get it. I 100% get it. But here's the thing. When someone else is forking over the money, that's when it becomes problematic. And literally, I have seen, which I feel is really, really just stupid. A lot of tech people come on YouTube and talk about I make $200,000 a year and I only work one hour a day. Now, I have never worked in tech, so I don't know how acceptable that is. But if I was a manager of that company and I knew we were paying this employee $200,000 a year and I saw him on YouTube talking about I make $200,000 a year and I only work one hour a day, I would have some problems with that. I would have a lot of problems with that. More than likely that employee would be fired. More than likely he would be fired because I do know people and I have friends who have 200, 300, 400, $500,000 a year jobs. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, they're literally working seven days a week. There is none of this. They may work from home, but they are working. They are working. None of this. I make 200, $300,000 a year and I only work an hour a day. That is a complete and other fantasy that a lot of people are putting out and I, I would say I use an old school term fronting. They're putting out fronting that once again, I don't know of a company outside of one of the top 50 companies because this was funny. Facebook had a situation where they were hiring recruiters and people to hire people and they told them not to hire people and they were paying these people 190, 200,000 a year, which kind of blew my mind. But once again, you know, there, there's so many things that's going on. And this crisis of the remote workers is going to create a completely indifferent pathway for these companies to actually handle this because in time they will handle it because they have to. They need people to work. They need people to do certain things. They will handle this. And it's going to be very interesting to see. But I feel that the pandemic created a set of circumstances, literally created a monster because this re remote work from home thing is a monster. It's a big gaping monster that is just not going to change anytime soon. And like I said, these people will quit before they go back for that office because that whole power of having control of your life is it, just so intoxicating. It's just so intoxicating. All right. Now, speaking of intoxicating, I want you to think of something. I want you to think of creating a process and a system where everything that you want to get done, you can get it done in a timely, systematic, and orderly fashion. Once again, I gave you guys the free money course because I feel everyone needs to manage their money. 
And this course is not a free course, it's a paid course, and it's about productivity, getting things done. And there are many, many things in this course that I have never, ever talked about on YouTube that will be in this course. Now, today there is no new added information in the course, but tomorrow we're going to get into some new training and some new habits. Because once again, success is two words, habits and behaviors. And when you change your habits and you change your behaviors and you change how you do things, this opens you up to becoming way more successful. So right now, you can get into this course for the special student discounting because I'm building it out. So the course is cheaper. So the price of the course is much lower right now than it will be once I finish it. And once I finish it, I'm gonna send out some emails, let people know, and then I'm gonna raise the price and then we'll start working on the next course. Because essentially, I have courses lined up, set up, and created from now until December. So it's gonna be a really busy year for me getting these courses, putting them out, and essentially this is part of the revamp. I'm revamping everything, I'm redoing everything. I am resetting up everything. So for you, since you guys are fans of the channel, you get special student discounting and you can go ahead and get in here and then we're going to, tomorrow we're gonna to do more training and this weekend we're gonna do more training to speed you up to create these critical masses for you to be successful because once again, success is two things, habits and behaviors. Change your habits, change your behaviors, and then you're on the pathway to being very, very successful. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Uh, the course link is gonna be in the first comment. It's also gonna be in the description. And once again, you can just go ahead and get in there because there's things you need to start doing and there's things you need to buy to prepare yourself for the course. So go ahead, don't wait till the last minute, get in there so you can start learning how to be successful today. And I'll see you guys in the next one.